Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Sweezy. I'm Tom Ladshaw. And I'm Annie Roberts. Welcome to Behind the Scenes at Bent Haven Museum. In this video series, we're going to show you some things that you can't see on a regular tour. Like what? Like how dummies operate, uh, surprises from the storage room, and some treasures from the archives. Let's get started. Hey Annie. Yeah? I'm so excited mm -hmm. to be with you today up here in the Vent Haven Archives sharing one of my favorite elements of the collection, Mr. Berger's personal correspondence files. This is an amazing archive. Mr. Berger corresponded with over 5,500 people and businesses throughout the course of his lifetime and he had the foresight to use carbon paper when he was typing his letters. Mm -hmm. So he sent the original, but then put a copy in the file so that we have both parts of the conversation with lots and lots and lots of people. Yes, this, this file is the reason that we can even tell the stories that we tell about the dummies in this collection. It's all sourced right here. Let's take a look at a file. Okay. So who do you, do you want to hmm. see? I'm thinking, I don't know, the Dean of American Ventriloquist? Jimmy Nelson? Yay! Let's look. Mr. Berger's correspondence file consists right now of seven four-drawer file cabinets uh, filled with all the personal correspondence, including one of our very favorites, Jimmy Nelson. So let's look at the Jimmy Nelson file. The correspondence with uh, Mr. Berger begins in 1944 and goes through last year. Yeah. Open it up, Annie. So when you get into a file, I love that if the person was a member of the International Brotherhood of Ventriloquists, mm -hmm. we get their application right here, which has so many interesting details about that ventriloquist. Yes. To start off the file. Mm -hmm. I typically, in the first letter, I just think this is amazing after having read so many files of Mr. Berger's, that with his first correspondence with most people, mm -hmm. he makes a request and he says to Jimmy Nelson on December 12, 1944, um, you should be represented in this <laughs> Vent Haven <laughs> and would appreciate one of your autographed pictures, preferable an uh, 8x10, to be framed and hung in the Chamber of Horrors, which is my pet name for this part of the exhibition. I love that. Yeah. You also get, when you're going through a correspondence file, just nuggets about the person's history. Like, not too far in, we get this letter from October 1946 where it says, since I sent this picture, I've had a new figure made by Frank Marshall, Danny O'Day. So a record of when he first got Danny O'Day. Here it is, right in our archive. Yes, I think it's, uh, it's just remarkable that those, that we have this first-hand record mm -hmm. of when things happened. And it really helps us with accuracy and with helping people, uh, you know, get the story straight. Absolutely. Uh, correspondence continues on, and another one of the best pieces in here really uh, shows, I think, Mr. Uh, or Jimmy's um, great sense of humor, and this is from uh, uh, January, what's that, January 30th of 2018. Yeah, so this is written to the Ben Haven president, and Jimmy writes, uh, I am so pleased and surprised at the news that I have been granted the prestigious honor of being named Director Emeritus of the Ben Haven Museum Board of Directors. When I read your letter, I have to say I was simply speechless, yes. which isn't good for a ventriloquist. Always with the joke, Jimmy. Always with the joke. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the the gist of the correspondence file for Jimmy. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the letters, of course, we have uh, two files of his press clippings, things that go back uh, as long as he was performing, and uh, things like playbills and things like that that also go with his written archive. Yeah. So that's Jimmy. And this is just a treasure that you don't get to see on the regular tour. It is. It is. And I, I think it's the, one of the coolest things at all about this whole collection. Mm -hmm. Since this footage was shot, Jimmy Nelson passed away at age 90. His relationship with Van Haven was invaluable. From his friendship with Mr. Berger to performing at the official opening of the museum in 1973, he served on the first board of advisors, and it was Jimmy's idea to have a ventriloquist convention. In 2011, the entire convention was dedicated to Jimmy and his 70 years as an entertainer. Uh, the board of directors gave him the title Dean of American Ventriloquists, and we named a building after him to commemorate all that he had done for Vent Haven Museum. He was a gentleman, a treasure, and always the funniest man in the room. Jimmy Nelson was the best, beloved by all, and made everyone feel special. He will be missed. Our sincere condolences go to his beautiful wife, Betty, and their entire family. We are all so very grateful for all the time we had with Jimmy. <laughs> 